All right. Uh, as much as I like Microsoft Forms as sort of the initiation stage or the initiation piece for um, Power Automate flows, there are some shortcomings and, and some places where it doesn't exactly do a great job. One of those is choosing people. So just to, to kind of clarify what, I'm, what I mean is uh, I have here just a simple form a generic request form where I'm saying what do you want who needs to approve it so the idea here is if I need ink for my printer or a new mouse or whatever it might be I want to be able to plug in what I need and then plug in the name of the person who is going to approve it now the problem is that there is no person question type in Power, I'm sorry, in Microsoft Forms. So when I take this data into Power Automate to create the approval and assign the approval, there is no 100% perfect way to make sure that the data that's entered on the form is going to match up to an actual person. So in this case, I'm basically saying to, you know, be sure to enter their exact and correct email address. Uh, because if the email address can't be found, your request will be denied. And that's something I'm going to handle in the flow. But the point is that you need a unique identifier for the person. And there is no built-in question type in forms that will give you that. Uh, and there are ways to get around this. If it's a finite number of people, you could make it a choice questioner or drop down and have them select a person and then inside your flow, match up that person to the appropriate email address. But that's not great because then you have to maintain that list. You know, basically you have to maintain that data, whether you maintain it in the form, in your flow, or probably in both. So in other words, it's not a very scalable solution. It'll work in certain circumstances, but it's not great otherwise. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up is that there is a better way to do this with some conditions. Um, but I'm going to go through that now. And, and basically it's thanks to the new capability in Microsoft lists to generate forms. So again, here I just have my, um, again, this is the form. I sort of replicated the form behavior in this list. So I have a re generic request list with approval, you know, not form. So the title field, I just renamed to what do you need? And then I have a column here, which is who should approve it. Now, because this is lists, not forms, uh, in a list, when you add a column, you have a choice. Uh, one of the column types is person. Uh, and that will be basically require the person, require the, the person, uh, the user filling out the form or uh, entering the list item to select someone from your directory. So it has to be a person in your organization, um, which Again, that is a limitation, but it's better because you're you're basically not asking them to type in some plain text that they probably will get wrong, or relying on them uh, relying on data that you're going to have to update. This is a real time lookup to users in your organization, so uh, it's a much better scenario. So that's what I've done here: is the who should approve it is a person field. Now, again. Typically, before this update, before this new forms capability in lists, the people who are submitting these requests would need add, would need permission to add items to this list. And that's not, you know, from a security standpoint, you probably don't want that. You don't want, you know, if, if you have students or general users who are going to be submitting these, you don't want the entire organization to have the ability to directly access and create and edit items in this list. Uh, but that's where this new forms capability really comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is click on the forms button here. It says new and at some point it'll stop saying new, but it'll still be there. And I'm going to select new form. And I'm just going to call this again, generic request form with 
approval. And again, I'm not building out the rest of the flow. I'm just demonstrating the this piece of it where we are now able to kind of give them a form, and we'll get to that, uh, where they can specify a person. So I'm going to just call it the same thing, generic request form with approval. Now, there are some limitations to this as well. Number one, this form can only basically the the link we'll see in a moment the link that gets generated for this form is something that anybody in your organization can use to submit an item to the list uh, that's really powerful it means that anywhere you put that link anyone in within your organization can use it but you can't use it outside your organization so for for example if, if that even though Microsoft Forms lets you distribute a form to people outside your organization, you can't do that with this form. Uh, number two, there are, because you're, you're in lists, there are some list uh, columns that are not supported in this scenario. So for example, uh, a file attachment in a Microsoft Form, if when they submit that request, they need to attach a file you won't be able to use that file attachment or, or you know they won't be able to attach items inside of this form that's connected to the list so again it's there's no perfect solution it really depends on what you need to be able to do what you won't need your the people filling out the form to be able to do uh, and what you're willing to kind of trade off for that but in the scenario we're working with here, I'm just going to say uh, right now it's just these two fields, but you could have other fields. You can even add new fields here and it will add those columns to the list, but you'll see that there are, you know, these are the limitations. These are the types of fields you can add. A single line of text, a choice, a number, a date, and time, uh, multiple lines of text, yes or no, like a checkbox. Uh, person which we're already using a hyperlink or currency but there's no file attachment there's no you know Likert scale there's no rating but you could do you know that same idea using a choice column anyway that's that's another app but these are the types of fields you can add uh, but I'm gonna assume that yeah and there are some themes you can look at and some other settings you can you can visit but for right now I'm just going to say send the form so we can see what this form is going to look like so when I click copy link and I go and open up a new browser tab and paste that and go uh, this is what that form is going to look like and again if you styled it differently it'll look different uh, but it's the same idea I can type in you know I need some paper clips and who should approve it now the difference here is that I can start typing a name uh, and I'll just type in Carter and I can see I can select Andrew Carter or I can select you know I can type in someone else's name like uh, Adele Vance so the point is they can type their name in and it will then search your organization now in your organization if it's a large organization you have people with similar names you still have that that potential for someone to select the wrong name um, if there are you know 10 Bob Smiths and they type in Bob Smith how are they going to know which one they're selecting they might not um, but to that end you can also type in you can have them type in the person's email address so in this case I'm typing in R Hogan because I know that's Robert Hogan's the start of his email address so you can kind of narrow down the field that way um, and then when you submit basically that's being submitted as a person not as text not as anything else so when you if you now have a power automate flow that's running whenever a new item is created in this list the list data itself that field is a person field so it, it it's guaranteed to match up to that person whereas when you do it with a power with a Microsoft form and you ask for a name or an email address you have to do the legwork of matching that up and and validating that it is an actual person and 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 ideally that it's the correct person um, so just want to throw this out there as one of the options if you are in a situation where you're building a form and one of the question types that you want to include is a person 
it's not there. I honestly don't think it ever will be there in Microsoft Forms, but it is there by virtue or by way of this Forms capability that's now available in Microsoft Lists, albeit with the limitations that it does not support the same range of questions that you can use in a, in a Microsoft Forms form, uh, and that it is also only going to be available to people in your organization. So hopefully this is useful. Uh, if you have any questions, problems, throw those in the comments down below, but uh, thank you and have a great day.